So it is a real pleasure to introduce our next speaker. He is a lifelong resident of Oakland. He knows Oakland's issues. He knows Oakland's communities. He knows Oakland. He went to UC Berkeley, my alma mater, and he is a champion for public education. And post pandemic, if you hear calls for austerity, that means public education is on the chopping block. So we need champions and he certainly is a champion. Uh, and I don't mind telling you all that the entire activist community was cheering when he was elected last year. He is Oakland Board of Education Director for District 5. It is a pleasure to bring forward Mike Hutchinson. Mike. Wow. <laughs> um, thank, thank you for that introduction. Uh, I, I, I think that might be a little bit much, um, but I'm, I'm really honored to be here today. And uh, like what was just mentioned, before I say anything else, I really uh, I see a lot of familiar faces here. And I really want to thank um, both Our Revolution East Bay and BATS uh, for all of their support, especially in the last election. Uh, we were able to really put together this coalition that we're looking at here, and it brought us to victory. Um, and so um, before I, I launch into the history, um, I really do want to stress that I feel like we are winning now, and we are really starting to, to turn some of these corners. Um, but for everything that we just heard mentioned, Oakland has basically been ground zero on the West Coast for the privatization of public education. Um, we have been used as an experiment, as a Petri dish for all of these national forces to come in and develop these policies. And for us in Oakland, it started in 2003 when our school board and school district was taken over by the state of California. If you look at some of the similarities for the cities really facing uh, the threats of school privatization, most of those cities do not have a democratically elected school board because that's part of the pattern that the forces of privatization use. So in Oakland, we were taken over by the state of California. And what the state of California did is they appointed a state administrator who had full authority over our school district our school board and our community were disenfranchised. That's when we started to experience school closures and a proliferation of charter schools in this period in Oakland from 2003 to 2009. If you remember back to some of the organizations that Anthony Cody mentioned before, the Broad Foundation appointed three of our four state administrators. So these were outside of Oakland administrators who were trained at the Broad Administrator Academy and were brought to Oakland to implement certain policies. And that's what they did. So we saw our neighborhood schools closed. We saw the elimination of curriculum. We saw almost the complete elimination of adult ed and our child development centers. And our district was decimated because outside forces were put in control. Then as we started to regain local control in 2009 is when nationally charter schools and privatization really became a movement about privatization. And like Anthony mentioned at the start, one of the components of school privatization is the creation of AstroTurf organizations. And what we experienced in Oakland as our school board began to regain local control is four billionaires used their resources to leverage control and policy decisions. We had three national billionaires, Eli Broad, the Walton Family Foundation, and Bill Gates. And we had our local billionaire, the Rogers Foundation, who formed an organization called GO, Great Oakland Public Schools and they started getting very active in electoral politics. They also formed another organization called the Oakland Public Education Fund. To this day, the Oakland Public Education Fund is a fiscal sponsor of OUSD, of our school district. Every charitable contribution that our school district gets is laundered through the Ed Fund first, where they take at least 7% off the top. The other thing that started to happen is um, we started to eliminate whole departments in our school district 
and started to rely on either outside consultants to provide those services, another big component of privatization, or what was called interns from the certain organizations that had a political agenda. Again, the Oakland Public Education Fund. There's another organization called Education Pioneers, which is an offshoot of the Broad Foundation. We still have a lot of those people working in our school district, running programs and providing key services. And so again, our district was, was taken over by privatization. And we need to understand what that means. That means there are private organizations coming in and extracting a profit margin out of our public education dollars. That is what it means, just like private prisons as compared to prisons that the state runs. It is also other folks can come in and extract profit off of our communities at the expense of our public education system. And again, it replicates the colonial model all over again which is what we've experienced in Oakland time and time again, where we have lost local control and outsiders have come in and dictated to us. And in the end, we've wound up with even less. And so at a certain point, many of us started to see something was going on and it sparked something. For me, at this time in 2011, 2012 school year, I was still working in the schools in Oakland. The two schools that I had worked at for 10 years were under threat to be closed that year. The one in particular that I was at was Santa Fe Elementary. And I know most people might not know the, the geography of Oakland, but Santa Fe Elementary is three blocks away from the founding intersection of the Black Panther Party. That is a very, very important school to the community. It literally birthed the Black Panther Party that spread around the world. That school was slated for closure and we really organized that year to try to fight this off. That's when I became politicized to our schools being under attack in this sort of way. And there were five schools slated for closure that year. We got to the point late in that school year where we had a thousand community members showing up at school board meetings, but still our school board that had been bought and paid for by Go Public Schools and funded by these outside billionaires insisted on closing our schools. In the end, at the end of 2012, when they voted to close our five schools, the community led by one parent held a 17 day occupation and sit in at one of those five schools at Lakeview Elementary. And that's what really sparked us here in Oakland. So for me, I wound up running for school board that year. I didn't win and I didn't win four years later, but I did win last year finally in my third attempt after a million dollars combined being spent against me by these same billionaires in Oakland School Board District 5. But kind of the other thing that happened for us here is that really started us organizing. I work with youth. I was never an organizer before. Um, and this really got us into organizing and realizing that we had to do something to fight back and to save our neighborhood schools, to save our school system. I was really lucky that soon after the election in 2012, uh, I was able to meet G2 Brown out of Chicago. And G2 Brown invited us in Oakland to testify with 30 cities at the Department of Education in January of 2013 at Obama's Department of Education with Arnie Duncan. And we were testifying on the damage done to all of our cities by school closures and charter schools. Because what had happened during the state takeover in Oakland the proliferation of charter schools had been so extreme that Oakland, since about 2007, has had the highest rate of charter schools in the state of California. We still now are at just about 30% charter schools. And in our city, um, we kind of have a freeway dividing our city. There's the hills and the flatlands. 40 of the 44 charter schools that we have in Oakland are below the freeway in the flatlands and in low income communities of color. And so we know if these charter schools and if privatization was providing better academic outcomes, 
our privileged families in the hills would be demanding those schools be placed in their neighborhoods. Instead, the opposite has happened. Those communities have been able to fight off school privatization, and they've only been put in low income communities of color. That was what we organized around nationally to testify at the Department of Education about in 2013. That was the weekend that we collectively formed the Journey for Justice National Alliance. And since that day, we have also been working nationally and collectively to push these issues forward. So this hasn't just been an issue in Oakland, California. This has been an issue in Chicago, in New York, in New Orleans, in Detroit, across this country, particularly in the cities we used to refer to as the chocolate cities. Because just like any other destructive policy, it is directed at our communities first. And so we have done an amazing job of creating something out of nothing when it comes to organizing against billionaires and these policies. And so let's not forget that really the charter school policies and most of these policies of privatization come directly out of ALEC, just like a lot of other policies, just like stand your ground. These are the folks who have always had it out for our communities, who have never wanted us to be educated. So through the Journey for Justice National Alliance, we've worked really hard to bring on other leading uh, national uh, civil rights and Black-led organizations. So nationally, the NAACP has called for a moratorium on school privatization because of our work together. And even though in Oakland, we have a branch of the NAACP that is out of alignment with the national and is very problematic when it comes to school privatization, nationally, the NAACP has become a strong ally. Also, the Movement for Black Lives has taken uh, policy positions against school privatization and charter schools. And now we're excited here in Oakland because my victory in this last election really means that we have turned the corner. I am the first school board member to be elected since the state takeover in 2003 with an explicit platform to counter these policies that have been inflicted upon our community. And things are moving quickly now. We beat Bloomberg head to head. We beat New Schools Venture Fund, a billionaire slush fund that's based in Oakland. And we beat the charter schools. And so now our work that we're looking to do here in Oakland, and it's an open question, is how do you restore community control to a district that has been taken over? You know, it always happens to Oakland first. So when we were taken over in 2003, a lot of what the privatizers learned in Oakland they then implemented after Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. It was based on what they had learned in Oakland. But now we don't have any place to look and say, okay, now how do we restore local control? How do we go about closing the charter schools now that we pass the new state law, Assembly Bill 1505, that gives us tools to close charter schools and deny them? How do we go about doing that? In a city like Oakland, where 30% of our schools are charter schools, we can't say tomorrow we're closing them all. How do we root out $80 million worth of consultants from our district? How do we build up our internal capacity again? How do we restore the trust that's been broken with the community having gone through these experiences? So this is a hopeful time, I think, for Oakland. And I wanna spread this word out from Oakland. I really appreciate the history that we heard today and the work of Anthony Cody and a lot of other folks that I was able to use when I first got into this. But now we are kind of at the doorsteps for turning a new corner. How do we go about ensuring that we have high quality public schools in all of our neighborhoods? How do we guarantee that we are resourcing our community schools, the way our communities deserve to be resourced? How are we holding our elected officials accountable? And how are we forcing them to finally act in our self-interest and not the interest of the billionaires who fund many of them? So I think it's hopeful. And I think if we take this history, if we take our strong uh, progressive values and we partner it with a deep belief in the community and the value of us working collectively to raise all of our ships, it is exciting going forward.
And my last little pitch that I'm gonna be talking about for the next year, one of the things we always worried about for transformational change in education was really to bring about that change, you kind of had to destroy the old system first. And for me personally, I, I didn't want to destroy public education in Oakland. That was always a, a worry. Well, during this last year, our schools have been shut down. They've been destroyed. And now for schools like Oakland, we have one-time COVID relief dollars raining out of the sky. How do we use these one-time relief dollars now to fund transformational change over the next three years to set up the kind of schools we want going forward? We have a competitive advantage against these charter schools now because of these COVID relief dollars. And so this is a time I'm making a call. I see there's elected officials on here and I know there's other folks in Oakland. We are hijacking the strategic plan in Oakland and I'm on the budget and finance committee. This is now an opportunity that we didn't know would be here. Given the history that we've just heard with these one time dollars, we have this opportunity now so how do we build off of this history and really build in this change and this correction that we've needed for so long? So thank you. I'm going to stop speaking because I'm going to start giving too much rah-rah. Um, but I really appreciate being here. And please, once you have this history and some of this, spread it to your community. And more than anything, we need folks being engaged. Be engaged at your local school, with your local school board, with your city government, with your state government. The reason so much of this happened in Oakland is because we let it happen as a community. And we need to make sure that we hold a line and never let those things happen again. So thank you for, for letting me talk for a little bit today. And, and again, I appreciate the support and we got a big four years here in Oakland. That was great. Thanks, Mike.